What is going on everyone and welcome back to the channel. I hope you're all doing well. Today I've got for you another crazy relationship story. In this one, a woman's husband almost causes the death of their baby boy by pure negligence. Now thankfully the child didn't end up being harmed. But there is an update to this story, which is really quite strange. Before we get into this story, make sure to drop a like on this video. Subscribe to the channel. If you're happy, I've remembered to do an intro for once. I've been forgetting them recently. Here we go. My husband almost killed our baby and my toddler saved him. This was originally posted on March the 11th, 2024. Hey Reddit, I need to share this story because I'm still shaking from what happened. I am a 25 year old woman and I've been with my husband who is 30 since 2018. We have a three year old girl and a newborn boy. But tonight, things almost took a turn for the worse. My husband has always had trouble paying attention, but I never thought it would come to this. Our neighborhood is weirdly laid out with cars zooming by at crazy speeds at all hours of the day. I was folding clothes when I heard our toddler screaming, dad, help. That tone made me drop everything and sprint outside. What I saw made my blood run cold. Our newborn in his stroller careering towards the busy street. I screamed and ran to him, barely stopping the stroller in time. My baby girl's hands and knees were scratched up because she tripped trying to run after the stroller. I snatched up my baby, heart pounding, and scanned for my husband. He wasn't watching. He was chatting with neighbors, completely oblivious. The anger I felt was unlike anything I've ever experienced. I stormed up to him, shouting in disbelief. He looked shocked at first, then realized what almost happened. The apologies and tears came pouring out, but it was too late. I couldn't wrap my head around how he could be so careless, so blind to our toddler's screams and the stroller rolling away. I packed up the kids and left, staying with my parents. They're on my side, but my husband keeps texting, begging for forgiveness, calling it an honest mistake. But I can't shake the terror of almost losing my baby because he couldn't focus for a single second. My baby girl got hurt in the process as well because he couldn't pay attention. I almost lost my son because he couldn't pay attention. I can't stop crying. I feel so guilty. I wish this all never happened. Sorry it's short. I just want to hold my babies and I can't stop shaking every time I think about it. What if I was just one second late? Would I have been planning a funeral? And the reason I left the house instead of him was because I hate that house. I don't feel like it's safe for the kids with all the traffic. And I was right. It's my husband's workhouse. I can't be running either. I had a C-section less than six weeks ago. A lot of people are saying, why wasn't I watching the kids? Well, I was doing their laundry like a parent. He was supposed to be taking them for a walk to have bonding time with them. He literally created this by himself. This has never happened before. How was I supposed to know? And people saying, why didn't I get him checked out? Well, I'm not his mother. He is 30 years old. I'm sick of people acting like I have to parent my own husband while I literally have a newborn toddler and I'm still healing from a C-section that I teared my stitches from when I ran to get my baby. I don't care if it was his ADHD. The court wouldn't care either. If he killed my child, he would have gone to prison either way. Okay, so that is it for the original post. Now let's get into some comments. Someone has said down below. Okay, look, he was 100% wrong and I would be livid just like you. However, I'm a little confused of the situation. Like, why was your baby just in a stroller, unattended? Why did the stroller randomly go into the road? Since it sounds like you were at home, is this maybe something you guys normally do just to have a place for the baby to sit out in front of your house when your toddler's playing outside? Maybe it was a freak accident. I'm gonna be honest as a mum. most of us have stories of near-death experiences with our kids. We can be naive and stupid and expect a little child to have more awareness or survival skills than they do. When my son was two, for example, we had a horrible experience with an escalator and I still have times where I can't sleep because of it. We're all idiots when it comes to parenting because how can you know until you live it? And seriously, like every parent has one of these moments unless you're one of those insanely lucky ones. I still really don't understand the whole scenario of what happened, but to me it seems he really has remorse and feels terrible. And once you go through something like that, you never forget it. So if he cares and loves your kids, he's devastated and has learned a hard lesson. I don't know that your response was the best, but I get why you did it in the moment. But I do think you guys should have a serious talk and maybe look into moving if possible. I wouldn't go straight to divorce like Reddit loves to preach. I think there is a solution here. And I'm so sorry you're dealing with this. It's literally the worst feeling 
in the world. What a very sensible comment. OP replies, Hi love, let me just clear it up for you. So I was sitting inside in the lounge room and there's a huge window behind the TV that was a little open so I could hear outside. That is when I heard my toddler scream for her dad to help. When I was outside, he was standing on the neighbor's driveway. I assume that he must have left the baby literally on the road because there was no possible way that it would have rolled off like that. And my toddler was playing with the neighbor's cat before she noticed her brother was rolling away when I confronted him about it. He tried to explain but just kept stuttering. I still don't know exactly what happened. I don't know if he didn't put the brakes on the stroller, if the wind blew it away. I just don't know. My neighbor contacted me and had asked if I wanted the security footage because his wife is 100% on my side. So I'll probably find out exactly what happened once it gets sent to me. Oh, wow. That could be telling. Now, someone else also commented. I want to acknowledge that this is a horrific situation, but saying I don't care if it was his ADHD isn't going to fix anything and will probably only make things worse. Talking and thinking about it like he intentionally tried to kill your child isn't going to help either. With ADHD, you actually do not register things like this at all sometimes. Life expectancy for those of us with ADHD is actually significantly lower because many of us end up often accidentally killing ourselves. It's not the same thing as carelessness, but learning about ADHD a little deeper can help you guys be safer. Understanding how my ADHD works and using different than standard precautions like my brain needs has actually most likely saved my life. Wow, I did not know anything about this. Guys, if you know about this, enlighten me in the comments. I want to be educated. This person continues, lie out what you want from him. That's probably that he gets his ADHD better under control, whether that be through prescription medication or more homeopathic methods, that you get a different place if possible, that he not take your kids out in your front yard without you, etc. Also, neither he nor the neighbor noticed, but you heard your kid from inside. Well, something seems off here. Were your neighbors just watching the stroller roll towards the street? Was your husband on the other side of your house where he couldn't see the stroller? Were you already walking outside as this unfolded? I'm just trying to understand better what was going on here and why your husband or the neighbor didn't notice, but you did from inside. People with ADHD tend to be incredibly good and quick to act in emergency situations. So this is especially weird. I'm absolutely not accusing you of leaving anything out or anything, but asking you to think about what your husband and the neighbor were doing that neither of them noticed. That smells fishy. This is, of course, a horrible situation. I lost a pet due to the inattentiveness of ADHD, but I can't imagine losing or even nearly losing a child. OP replies, that is why I'm waiting for the footage. It doesn't make sense how this all happened. I don't know how to explain my house. There's a huge window in the lounge room it was open a little so I can listen out. The neighbor's house is two houses away. We're at the end of the street near the main road. When you first walk into my house on your left, that is the lounge. And on the right, there's the kitchen. When I got up, I couldn't run that fast as I'm still healing. Sorry if this doesn't make sense. But when I ran outside, the neighbor's wife was running for the stroller, but was still far away. And the neighbor was helping my little girl off the road. That's all I saw. I'm just waiting for a response from them. My husband, though, was just standing there, hands on his head, doing nothing. Okay, and then one final comment. Somebody said, I freaking screamed when I read what happened. Are you okay? Like, did you get any more damage to yourself? You literally just had a baby. What the F was your husband doing? Like, being outside with small children, especially on a busy street, should be treated like watching babies swim because anything can happen in an instant. I hope you're okay. And also, I don't know, but do you all have cameras in your house? I wonder how long your husband was talking to the neighbor. OP says they tore their stitches from the C-section and had to go to the ER while there. I made sure my baby girl got her knees and hands bandaged up. The crazy thing is, I didn't even realize I was bleeding until I was in my parents' car. My mum pointed it out. She panicked, took baby boy back to their house and my dad took me and my daughter to the hospital. All right, there's quite a lot to unpack here and I think I kind of agree with what the comments are getting at a little bit. There probably is more context here that is going to be revealed in the update, which we're going to get into in just a moment. But I want to get my thoughts on, on what we've read so far. I do think it is a bit weird that, that neither your husband nor the neighbor heard the scream of your children and you did from being inside. I mean, maybe they were just totally wrapped up in conversation, but you'd expect them to hear it. Maybe it was just where they were and for whatever reason, the direction of the sound travel. I don't know. I don't think, as as someone said there, that 
your husband was intentionally not listening out or you know neither him nor the neighbor heard something on purpose but i do also agree with the point that this sort of stuff does probably happen more regularly than you'd think i mean parents get in the comments down below i'm sure the vast majority of you have had a situation like this happen very sadly but you get away with it i mean i guess it's kind of just part of raising a child situations like this that are sketchy are bound to happen i mean i know a couple that have happened in my life crashing a bike for example when i was very young now i mean that could have gone terribly wrong but thankfully i only ended up with just like scarring on my face actually you know what can i i don't even know if i'm allowed to show i actually i'm not you know what's so weird about youtube i'm not even allowed to show a picture of me as a child with like scars or down my face because that's like child endangerment you know what i'll just chuck it on my instagram as a story if you want to follow me on instagram link down below it's it's in the description but yeah i can't show it on here but the point is it happens to every kid and you know you get away with it or tragically sometimes you don't but i don't think that's like you know i wouldn't go crazy on my husband for doing this it's just a terrible situation and yeah i think he'll learn from it but yeah those are my thoughts so far however 11 days later we did get this update oh i do apologize guys the update was actually 11 hours later on the same day here it is the neighbor's wife sent me the footage and i really can't wrap my head around it so my husband was walking with the stroller and my toddler was in front of them when they passed the neighbor's house my neighbor was outside washing his car and my toddler saw his pet cat and stopped to go and pet it so my husband stopped left my baby on the road he didn't even bother locking the wheels and walked all the way up the driveway not even bothering looking back at the baby he had his back facing towards him for about five minutes before the stroller just suddenly started moving i think it's because the road is on a hill or it could have been the wind my toddler never went near the stroller it couldn't have been her the stroller went down the road and so did my toddler that is when she started screaming and running for it when she saw what was happening the neighbor then started running after my daughter when she tripped he tried to pick her up and that is when the neighbor's wife's car comes into frame she stops starts running back to the way the stroller is coming and after that you can't really see anything because it's all out of frame but you can hear all the commotion and my husband is just stood there the whole time hands on head with a blank stare on his face he didn't even do anything when our toddler was crying from hurting herself he only started crying when i confronted him what do i do i genuinely do not know what to do i'm panicking this was never the life i wanted for my kids i don't understand why he was just standing there i've not even gotten a text or a call from him since i got sent the video it's just been silent i just can't get the sound of my daughter's screams out of my head that's the sound no mother wants to hear i can't explain it in the moment but it felt like my blood went cold and i just felt pure fear i never want to watch the footage again well there we go i mean that is that is all the context we needed and i've got to say that normally I'd, I'd try and give someone the benefit of the doubt here as i was saying you know in my previous comments that this sort of thing does generally happen but given the actions of your husband there I, I just can't i can't give him any sort of kind of excuse i can't help him at all here there's like three or four different things he's done which are just inexcusable and life-threatening i mean first of all not taking the stroller with you leaving it on the road i don't know if you mean by the way leaving it on the road or the sidewalk or the pavement or whatever but i mean near the road where there are cars obviously passing on a little bit of a hill whatever it doesn't even matter leaving your, your your baby unattended also it seemed like you left your toddler unattended slightly as well but more your baby next to the road or on the road and being turned away from the stroller for what five minutes chatting to your neighbor is crazy i mean honestly i think that is grounds enough for a divorce i just don't understand why you wouldn't just bring the stroller with you i just don't then after that the reaction when something is happening just standing there doing nothing is also crazy i mean that perhaps is a little bit more understandable because he could have just gone into shock at that moment not believing what he's seeing but still you'd want more in that moment i mean something like this in theory could happen again it, it wouldn't i mean hopefully wouldn't be you know the fault of your husband the next time but something like that where your child is in danger it could definitely happen you'd want him to react at least do something at least chase I don't know or at least show some emotion immediately after not just when you have a go at him for say saying what on earth are you doing <sighs> it's mental and i think the main thing is that i just don't know how you can ever trust him again with your children like you know say you're at work 
He's got the kids for the day. I don't know how your mind's not going over and over and over. Like the anxiety would be crazy the whole day. I don't know how you'd focus on anything else other than thinking this man almost killed or caused the death of, of one of my children, maybe even two. I mean, who knows? The toddler could have easily gone into the road as well, trying to save the stroller and, and her sibling. <sighs> yeah, I don't know. I, I think I think it's a crazy thing to say, but given what we've seen now from the footage, I think you've got to leave this man. Let me know if you agree in the comments down below. Maybe I'm being too harsh, but I'm just not sure how you could ever trust them again. Okay, now moving on to our second story of this episode. Would I be the jerk here? My niece wants my wedding dress and I think I'm going to refuse. I married 30 years ago and was lucky enough to have a custom made dress. I was very thin at the time and the dress design I chose was not typical 90s. Think more Regency style dress. I stored it away and carried on with life. I was blessed with sons and one daughter. I'll be honest, my daughter is a totally different body shape to me and I realized when she hit puberty, she would never wear my dress. She has a beautiful hourglass figure whereas I was catwalk model thin. My brother has two adult daughters, one built like my daughter, the other thinner. This is the one who asked for my dress after she got engaged at Christmas. Now, I don't like this girl. She is immature for a 27 year old. She's an attention seeker, an intentionally unemployed hypochondriac. She's one of those people on Facebook who post cryptic comments. And when someone inquires what's wrong, she responds with, I'll message you, hun. Oh my God. Sorry, that has just triggered in me. Like, oh my God. That's probably my least favorite people ever. That is like a, a 10, 15 year memory in me that's just been unlocked there from just random girls posting the absolute trash on Facebook and everyone being like, I don't care. But then they'd be like, oh no, where is me? Please, someone give me attention. I'll message you, babes. That sort of absolute, uh, here we go, shy I despise. Wow. I don't know if I wanted that memory to be unlocked, but it just has been. Thanks, OP. I dread any family events with her attendance because guaranteed she'll become ill at some point. Oh, attention seeking again. And her mum will have to take her home or find her a room to rest. Or she'll talk over the speeches or demand to dance with the host every time. It gets old. I don't have a close relationship with any of that side. And my husband and kids think she has Munchausen's. Now, I didn't know this, but Munchausen's syndrome is a mental condition in which a person repeatedly seeks medical attention for falsified, exaggerated, or self-inflicted physical symptoms. Yeah, I guess that's just attention seeking by claiming you're ill. So she sends me a text saying, Hi, auntie, just got engaged and really want to wear your dress for the big day. Have you still got it? I haven't responded yet. I called my mum asking how my niece even knew about the dress. She said because she told her. Mum said that she offered the dress knowing it was stored away and that because my niece was on a budget, using my dress would be a good idea. And it's not like your daughter will wear it because she's so large, she said. That hurt. She's not large. She's just got boobs and a butt that women pay good money for. That's a difference. By the way, imagine your own grandma saying that about you. What the heck? So after laying into my mother about insulting my kid and then laying into her again for offering something that didn't even belong to her, I hung up. I'm not a sentimental person. I love the dress, but if my daughter wanted to cut it up and use pieces of it, I wouldn't mind. I just don't want to see it on my niece and I don't want to deal with the drama if I say no. All right, let's get into some relevant comments. First of all, someone asked about OP's mum in general. OP says, she has her moments. One Christmas Eve years ago, she called me to tell me she'd just invited distant relatives to Christmas day dinner. The Christmas day dinner that I was cooking in my home. I told her to call them back and disinvite them or I'd feel no guilt refusing their and her entry to my home when they arrived. She got really angry and complained how bad it would look on her if she had to phone them back and cancel. I said I didn't care. Christmas day came and went and my parents didn't arrive, nor did the relatives. She didn't speak to me until March. Someone else asked, why isn't the girl looking for her own mother's dress? She's way too entitled. My brother never married his daughter's mother, Opie replied. She did marry someone else later on, but it wasn't a traditional wedding with a dress. Opie continues saying, I don't hate my niece. I could list the things I admire about her, but it still wouldn't make me want to give her my dress. I mean, yeah, from my perspective here, um, you don't have to give anyone anything that's yours ever. It doesn't, like, it doesn't matter who they are. Now, on top of that, given the fact that you actually dislike this person, yeah, simple as that. I don't think anything else needs to be said. Clean. 
clean cut for me. But a couple of days later, in fact, just the very next day, March the 4th, we got this update. Thank you for all your comments. They gave me good advice and highlighted things I hadn't actually thought about. One suggestion was that I should answer back ASAP, that my niece may take the silence as no news is good news and imagine that she has permission. I believe she'd be the kind of person to post on Facebook, thank you auntie for giving me your dress without getting a response. So I texted her back a few hours after her initial text. The next recommendation was to hide the dress. There were also suggestions that my mum may have already shown her the dress, so get it back. Luckily, my mum doesn't have the dress at her home. It's in my possession and it isn't in easy access. You'd have to know where it is to find it. Our home also has cameras, but I don't think that my niece is that determined. She's very much a, if it's hard work, I can't be bothered kind of person. I called my daughter and had a conversation regarding what she would like me to do with the dress. She liked the idea of using pieces for her wedding and maybe making keepsakes for any daughter-in-laws that enter our lives. So that decision has been settled. The last recommendation was to ensure that all interested parties were kept in the loop and made aware of my decision so there's no miscommunication later down the line. So I copied my text response to my niece and I sent it to my brother and my niece's mother to ensure they all knew. I'll tell my own mum when I've calmed down and feel like talking to her again. Yeah, after you get over the fact that she called your daughter, her granddaughter, fat. Onto the text. No is a complete answer, but once again, I feel that my mum needed to be called out for her part in all of this. Our mother has a habit of volunteering her family's time and resources to make herself look good. There's a lot of resentment with us kids over this behavior. So here it is. Hi, niece. Once again, congratulations on the engagement news. I'm so happy for you both. I do still have my dress, but I'm afraid that Nana misled you to believe my dress was available to be loaned out. My dress has great sentimental value to me, and my daughter will be the only other person to have access to it. I'm sure when you contact Nana again, she'll be able to help to find you an alternative dress. See you all at Easter. She texted back immediately. Okay, thanks anyway. I copied this message to my brother with a comment. This is for you to deal with in case there is drama. Mum has been trying to play the hero with other people's things again. He hasn't responded yet. So that's it for now. I checked my niece's Facebook page this morning and there were no passive aggressive memes or comments that I can see about family not supporting her or not being the favorite and that's how she likes it. So hopefully this will blow over hopefully yeah well dealt with op pretty uh cut and dry this one i think there's not much to it just as long as she doesn't go like pandering to the rest of the family or again playing the victim on on social media like virtue signaling that sort of stuff i think that's fine i think that is fine anyway guys that is gonna do it for this one really hope you enjoyed it if you did and you want more relationship stories right away check out my playlist on screen right here of all my relationship content in an easy access mode start the binge if you're new to the channel or you know what even if you're not new to the channel you probably missed a few of these start the binge now get through them you'll love it just whack it on and just forget about it easy background listening